Hey everyone, uh, man, I know it's been a few days. Sorry about that, uh, sorry about the lack of videos. We have a new episode of HTN. Uh, here's the news coming a little bit later, probably, I don't know, four hours from now or so, uh, depending, maybe a little sooner, we'll see. But right now, I needed to get this story out because it couldn't wait. You guys know we've been on top of that Switch Pro news like crazy, and if more details come out between this video and uh, the next one, we'll, uh, well, we'll, we'll add it to here's the news. But for now, I want to get into this because Switch Pro news is popping off still, and it's looking like maybe I was pretty correct when I said that Digital Foundry was wrong in that video. Remember, uh, John Linneman clarified what they meant. They, they, they said there was two different models they think is coming. One with the OLED 7-inch screen that was going to be like a new Tegra X1 XL model and then a Switch Pro model coming in 2022. Well, uh, Takahashi Machizuki at Bloomberg opened up again, this time with different sources than last time. Well, the prior, prior sources seemed to be about executives high up at manufacturing plants working on Nintendo components. These are now from actual game developers, which gives us some clarification on prior rumors as well we've been hearing about the Switch Pro, but in more exact details here than simply just saying, oh, it has DLSS, it has 4K. Those have been like generic terms tossed out there. Now we get more details. Let's get into this article. So this is over here at Bloomberg. This was just posted literally today. Um, they're like way early this morning. Look at that, 1.40 a.m. Central. It says, it says Nintendo will use new NVIDIA graphics chip in 2021 Switch upgrade. So the Nintendo company plans to adopt an upgraded NVIDIA Corp chip with better graphics and processing. So a new GPU core, new CPU cores for a new Switch model planned for the year-end shopping season, according to people familiar with the matter. The new Switch iteration will support NVIDIA's deep learning, super sampling, or DLSS, a novel rendering technology that uses artificial intelligence to deliver higher fidelity graphics more efficiently. That will allow the console, which is set for an OLED display upgrade, to reproduce game visuals at 4K quality when plugged into a TV. So they're saying DLSS is intended for TV use. Uh, said people who asked not to be identified because the plan is not public. AKA Nintendo hasn't announced it yet. The U.S. company's new chipset will also bring a better CPU and increased memory. DLSS support will require new code to be added to games, so it will primarily be used to improve graphics on upcoming titles, said the people, including multiple game developers. Bloomberg News previously reported that the new Switch was likely to have a 7-inch OLED screen from Samsung Display Company and coupled with the console's release with a bounty of new games. NVIDIA and Nintendo representatives declined to comment, which of course they did because nothing is actually announced. Uh, Nintendo Switch game release calendar remains mostly empty for the later half of the year, though the company announced Tuesday a new partnership with Niantic. I'm going to kind of skip over that because we will uh, talk about that in the upcoming HTN. Uh, analysts expect the new Switch will be offered at a higher price than the current model's 299 a level unchanged since the Switch's initial release in 2017. Bloomberg's intelligence Matthew Kannerman foresees an increase of as much as $100. $349.99 will increase the value proposition of the device, but I think Nintendo can drive strong demand even at $399.99. DLSS was first introduced as an image upscaling feature in 2018 and remains exclusive to NVIDIA graphics cards. It's an atypically advanced addition for Kyoto-based Nintendo, which has intended to opt for more mature and lower-cost technology than rivals Sony Corp. and Microsoft Corp. Adopt with their consoles. The new Switch will still lag the overall performance capabilities of its pricier rivals. What we value is how much a new technology contributes to the fun experience and how comfortably a consumer can play, Nintendo Senior Executive Officer Ko Shioto said last year. So in the end, what this means, you know, it, just reading just, just reading this article again, this is like my fourth time reading through it this morning, I, I kind of get the feeling that Nintendo is recognizing something that maybe would not have happened under Iwata. And that is that Nintendo can't keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect 
different results. Nintendo has had upgraded hardware in the past. The new 3DS, yeah, it helped with sales of the 3DS. Uh, just like, you know, the, what is it, the, the Game Boy Advance SP helped with sales, the Game Boy Color helped with sales, but we weren't seeing the same success that Nintendo had seen before, and we saw with home consoles, uh, you know, they had like the Wii Mini at one point that, you know, they thought that was going to be the thing that was going to really reinvigorate Wii sales by offering this super cheap version of the Wii that strips out a bunch of features that you don't need if you're out in the middle of the woods at a cabin and you can't, uh, Use uh, Wi-Fi, or it could be your second switch or second Wii or whatever in the house, or third Wii. Like it, it just it looked cool. The red and black colors were were were, were definitely something, um, but it also didn't really fit. It, it it was like a backwards move at a time when a HD Wii that would have allowed all games to be automatically upscaled to HD would have been better, or at least allowed developers to release HD updates for games would have been better. They instead opted to go with that and then give us the Wii U uh, a number of years later, which was a little like too little too late. You know, it had the power of, the, of an Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, uh, a little bit more powerful in some cases, less than others, but it also lacked the ability to um, really deliver that Wii brand experience, right? The Wii built on the motion controls. It kind of went away from that, went with this whole gamepad thing that felt like an add-on. Nintendo, there's a lot of reasons. I've examined this before on why the Wii U ended up not working out for Nintendo, uh, even if it ended up being a stepping stone to the Switch. But there's a lot, you know, all the reasons that Wii U didn't work out are the exact reasons that Switch has. And Shinjiro Furukawa, again, I'm going to keep bringing this up because this is a very important difference between uh, Shinjiro Furukawa and the prior couple of presidents, including Kimishima, who was there temporarily as uh, until Furukawa was ready. And then obviously Satoru Iwata. And that is that, hey, he views this, this Nintendo company, this Switch business as do or die every year. Every year, Nintendo is in a do or die mode. He doesn't want to fall off a cliff. He's been at Nintendo for 20 years and he has seen Nintendo consistently fall off a cliff and he doesn't want that to happen. This is a different Nintendo and a different president. Now you might not like that this president isn't as forward facing as Iwata was. Doesn't seem to have that personality where Iwata could really connect with people because he was a gamer, he was a game developer, then a corporate CEO, right? Like he worked his way up the chain and there's a lot of respect he gained for doing that. He had a, a really bubbly personality, just like Shigeru Miyamoto and Reggie Fizame. Just that was a different era of Nintendo. And yes, like many of you, I miss that era. I miss the directly to you, the jokes, the memes, the my body is ready. Like, I, I miss that era of Nintendo. But at the same point, that era wasn't without flaws. Just because it was entertaining to watch from the outside looking in doesn't mean that it was perfect either. For all the high successes of Wii and DS, there was the Wii U and 3DS, which even though the 3DS sold well, really isn't that successful in comparison to Nintendo's other handheld systems. Like, there was really, really high highs and really, really low lows. And, and every generation, even going back to GameCube, when they would see some success with sales, it would just stop and fall off a cliff. Maybe because game development went away or Nintendo stopped supporting it or there was just too much hinting like, oh, we, you, you know, back, back in 2000. Remember when Skyward Sword came out? 2011, decade ago, we got Skyward Sword. They announced Wii U, the E3 before Skyward Sword released. What the frick did you think was that was going to do to Skyward Sword sales? They avoided doing that the second time around with Switch where they waited. But still, what did they think was going to happen? So this is a very different Nintendo and a very different president. And I think uh, this president sees more, or is more apt to technology and, and, and sees the forest for the trees. He understands that, yeah, Nintendo has a unique nature that keeps their games, keeps an Animal Crossing being a 30-plus million seller in less than a year. Uh, has Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, a, a Wii U port selling 30-plus million. Has Breath of the Wild at 20-plus for the first time as Zelda games even crossed 10 million, let alone 20. Like, he sees that Nintendo has a unique charm and unique magic to it. I mean, heck, under Furukawa, we got the deal made for theme parks. Super Nintendo World out in Japan, and now there's one being built in Orlando, Florida, and I think there's a third one they're planning to build now. Like, we're seeing that he recognizes the magic of Nintendo, but I think he's trying to merge the magic of Nintendo with the reality of technology. 
and trying to realize, hey, we have something that works. We don't really have a competitor for what we're doing right now. There are GPD Win 3, so people can run that up. Who knows if Sony ends up ever rejoining and, and coming up with another PSP, PS Vita. I know there's some speculation and rumors are th out there about that. Maybe they jump back into the fray. Uh, who knows what other future handheld and hybrid systems could exist, including the ones that already exist for PC that aren't super popular because they're pretty pricey, but you know they're out there, and if they ever become affordable uh, with good, good specs, we'll see what happens. But... I think that he sees a Nintendo that is in a very unique position where they don't have to let go of this Switch idea. See, in the past, okay, we happened. Everyone adopted the Wii's motion controls, did them arguably better with PlayStation and, uh, and, and Xbox, and then started going to the next level. What happened with motion controls? They're still relevant for Sony. They have a brand new PlayStation VR platform for PlayStation 5 coming next year with all new motion controls. They went to the next step of motion control technology, which was VR. Sony took what Nintendo started and took it to that next level. Okay, Microsoft might not have it locally on their Xbox, but they are heavily involved in VR on the PC side of things. Like, Nintendo didn't go to the next level with what they were doing. So now Nintendo is in this unique position where they have the only hybrid Home console that's portable on the go, getting home console quality games like Doom Eternal, Breath of the Wild, all that jazz on the go, right? They're the only company that offers a platform like that that doesn't need to be done with streaming. Microsoft's answer to, to what Nintendo's doing is, we're going to stream, we're going to have xCloud. Sony's answer right now is, I don't know. I mean, Microsoft has remote play that works you know, pretty well if you're in your house. You know, I've, I've, I've used Remote Play on Xbox Series X on my uh, tablet upstairs, and it, I mean, it works. It's not perfect. I have some controller issues, uh, mostly, and I'm using an iPad, which I thought the controller issues would be sorted out, but they're not. But whatever. Like, it does technically work. As long as I can get the controller to sync up correctly, it works. So, I think that we are in this situation that, that Shintura Furukawa knows what he's doing. And he said, look, we're, we are where we are because of how amazing the system is because of how appealing it is and because of our games so we're not going to stop ramping up game production um hello we just got splatoon 3 announced for 2022 Do you, let me put this in perspective that's five six years in nintendo is usually at that point is dropping support to support their next system but shatura for was like well why would we do that when we're only halfway through how could you only be halfway through with a system that came back up in 2017 using 2015 tech? Oh, because we have a new system coming in 2021 that's using 2019, 2020 tech. And yeah, it's going to be more expensive. It's going to be a more premium device. But guess what? In two years, that price, you know, the price of that system is going to come down. Guess what? We're not going to stop making and selling the original Switch, at least not right away. You know, if this premium one doesn't work out, we still have the other one. But they know the man's going to be there. They know people are going to want to take advantage of their 4K television sets with the Switch. They don't want to fall behind. They don't want to ha well, see what happened with Wii. Where when Wii came out, yes, it was a gamble to not support HDTVs, but HDTVs weren't in every house. Five, six years later, everyone had an HDTV. Here we are in uh, 2021, and while 4K adoption rate is not blowing up as quickly as 1080p did because HDTVs uh, last a long time and people don't look to replace them all the time. The adaption rate has now reached a point where I think it's like one in every three households has a 4K something, whether it's their phone with a 4K screen, a 4K monitor, 4K TV, some sort of 4K devices in their house now that's capable of displaying 4K. And that's one out of every three houses in America. It's going to probably be half of those houses by the end of, you know, by, by sometime in 2022, it'll probably be at one, one out of every two houses. And then in three years, it'll be probably 60, 70, per 5% of houses. Dude, because 4K has become so cheap. For 250 bucks, you can get a 4K television. Is it a great one? No, but it is 4K resolution. It is better looking than the cheap 1080p panels they might own. So he doesn't want to fall behind. And yeah, I know, it's funny saying that when, oh my gosh, it still has a 720p screen and handheld. Let's just wait till it's here. Let's wait and see what that screen looks like in comparison to the original Switch. Let's see what the OLED difference is. Let's see if Nintendo decides to start using anti-aliasing. Let's see what the full tech is. Yes, it's a new GPU. Yes, it's a new CPU compared to the old Switch. It's more memory too. I don't know how much. 
You know, are we, are we talking storage, internal storage memory? Are we talking like 64 gigs, 128 gigs? Are we just talking more memory in terms of RAM or VRAM? You know, if we're just talking about normal RAM, there was four gigs. Are we going up to six? Are we going up to eight? Eight would probably be ideal. There's a lot of phones with eight. It'd be sweet if we had eight gigs. We'll see. But they're very adamant it's coming this year. Their manufacturing sources are telling them it's coming this year. Their developer sources are telling them it's coming this year. Game developers are telling them it's coming this year. Everything is telling them it's coming this year. It's coming this holiday. This is Nintendo's plan, period. They just haven't announced it yet. That's exciting to me. We're getting new technology. Nintendo is... The old Nintendo would just keep the normal Switch as it is and milk it and milk it and milk it until it doesn't sell anymore. This isn't normal Nintendo. This is Shinjiro Furukawa's Nintendo. He's keeping with the times. He's going to keep this platform going as long as he can. The, the next-gen Switch or whatever people think might be coming in 2023, 2024, or whatever year you think it's coming, guess what? What if it's not called a Switch 2? What if it's just the new Nintendo Switch or something like that, right? It just feels like another upgraded Switch, except that upgrade is now basically a new generation in comparison to the original. And then the family of systems continues. And suddenly, it's like a phone. Every three, four years, you just get a new one. You don't have to buy that one. You only have to buy one factually every six years. I've been talking about this strategy for a long time and how smart it would be. And again, Nintendo releasing an upgraded Switch this year doesn't necessarily prove my strategy belief that Nintendo is going to do is correct. But it's a step closer. And if the next platform comes out and they don't advertise it as a next generation Switch. Well, kudos to you, Nintendo. Because I think this is the exact market strategy they need to be doing with a mobile chipset. Gotta stick with the times, Nintendo. And NVIDIA right now doesn't make this crap for anybody else. So... That whatever we're getting is not currently being used in any other gaming device. And that's exciting too. Now, there are smart cars that can game, and you could argue maybe that technology is being taken advantage of in smart cars. But I'm just saying there isn't technically a gaming device that's using NVIDIA's technology in this way. Not anymore. So, let you guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. I am Nintendo Robojets from Nintendo Prime. Whew! I'll catch you guys in the next video.